Hello and welcome to Just One More Watch. Welcome today to my full review of the Second Hour Giant Stride, their third release but their second design. I recently reviewed their Mandala, which was their second release but their third design. This Giant Stride got stuck in the pipeline somewhere. Initial conception of the model was back in 2019, but it looks like it's gonna be released in a few weeks time, mid-October 2021. So it's taken them uh, quite a while to get this one off the ground. You saw the pop-up, I'm sure. This video is sponsored by Second Hour Watches. Don't just take my word for it, there are a bunch of other video reviews on YouTube and written reviews elsewhere of this one. So if you're keen on it, make sure you do plenty of research. I used to bemoan the lack, the dearth of decent value, dual crown, inner rotating bezel compressor style dive watches on the market, but it seems that that gap has now been filled or is getting close to full anyway. This is the third such watch by a micro brand that I have reviewed this year. I looked at the Phoebus Eagle Ray compressor towards the beginning of the year, the Mitch Mason Maelstrom relatively recently, and the second hour giant stride today. Now, I do have a few moans and niggles with this one, nothing too major, but make sure you stick around for those, including what I think could be the most petty piece of nitpicking I have ever subjected any watch to. Let's flip the camera and find out what it is. But before I start picking nits, a word on the packaging. This packaging is fantastic. You know, a leather watch roll is good once in a while, but these kind of travel pouches are my favorite. Not only do they really protect the watch in transit, you can then use them again to take a couple of watches away on holiday with you, and they don't occupy a lot of space. That's the second hour logo in the middle there. I do like the logo design. It's all about the kind of sacred geometry, although the geometry might be a little bit wonky on this one, but it's just a pre-production box. This is the box from the Mandala. The mandala will be making a bit of a cameo towards the end and yeah, it's all about the triangles and the squares and everything looking very nice but you should expect a bit of decent packaging because we're over the 500 US dollars today. These are going to be 615 on the pre-orders mid-October as mentioned. I'll leave a link in the description of the video. I will circle back to the price a little later on but first the name Giant Stride. Where does that come from? Well, the Giant Stride is apparently the manoeuvre that a diver makes. Uh, flippers ahoy when they are leaping into the blue unknown for the first time and that particular design is found on the case back of this model so I will show you that in due course. Now the first hundred of these that are ordered are going to be shipped with one of these leather straps. I'll pop it on the leather strap a bit later on as well. You can also spec on NATOs to match or not to match if you're into that look. Also available from the Second Hour website. And there it is. Now I've used the phrase before because it does apply to certain watches. This one is all about the dial, all about the dial and hands. Some watches have got fabulous bracelets, some watches it's about the Zeratsu polishing and fabulous case finishing. Second hour, I think, are about the designs of the dial and hands. And yeah, this one in my studio lights looking pretty spectacular from some angles. It just does look like there's been so much attention to detail poured into this design over the last couple of years. You can see why it has taken them so long to get to this point. So 42 millimeters in diameter. I measure it at 12.7 millimeters thick with a 46 and a half mil lug to lug. So that's a 42 mil watch with a 46 and a half lug to lug. That is really quite compact. For example, it is marginally smaller than the much, much smaller 38 and a half mil Seiko Solar that I looked at a couple of weeks ago and almost exactly the same lug to lug length as the venerable SKX 007009. Now I should point out that the end links, the mid links are inverted, but they're not fully articulated. So it's effectively a little bit longer than that, but yeah, it's a 42 that actually wears very nicely. 20 millimeter lug width, bit of a taper down to 18, back up to just under 21 at the second hour branded clasp. Sized up for me, seven inch wrist, this one weighs in at 157 grams, which is pretty much where I would expect to find a 42. So a 40 all stainless steel diver on a bracelet, I would expect 150, 42, I would expect about 160 grams. So all stainless steel construction, case dual crown, fixed bezel and full stainless steel bracelets. We have solid end links, solid links, screw links, and a proper mill clasp. Now, like the Mandala clasp, there's no cut out here 
here so you've got a smooth surface against the wrist for extra comfort. They are going to make a couple of changes to this between this late stage prototype unit and production models. They are going to add a fourth micro adjust hole which I think is a good thing. Chamfered edge here, you saw the logo earlier on and it is a double security pusher. Case finish is pretty simple if I'm being honest. As I said, it really is all about the dial and hands this one. Vertical brush on the side of the case. There is some high polished chamfered edge running from the kind of tip of those slightly downturned lugs, so slightly claw-like lugs there running up to the point where the crown enters the case. So dual crowns, one at the two, one at the four, and the crowns, I must say, are fantastic. They're about seven millimeters in diameter, nice and grippy, really well machined, and chocked full of loom. I will show you the loom a bit later on, I promise you. Second hour logo on that one and a triangle on that one. I assume it's replicating the triangle there from the inner rotating bezel. We have a piece of double dome sapphire crystal with plenty of anti-reflective undercoating and it's that type of double doming that does give you a bit of distortion. So yeah, there is a bit of flecto as you can see in my studio lights, but there's also enough AR that it just disappears. You get a really sharp view of the dial and hands under most circumstances circumstances. Very nice fine brushed upper surface to that H-Link bracelet. Bracelet is very comfortable in operation as well. You get heaps of articulation because of the H-Link style and you saw those screw links there. So yeah, it's going to be a comfortable watch to wear long term because of the smoothness of the bracelet. That solid piece of mill clasp there. They're actually going to put a bit of extra undercutting and high polish on this case on production units. I wouldn't necessarily have been screaming out for that, but there you go. Just one more little tweak they're going to make to it. So screw on stainless steel case back. Both of those crowns screw down. I'll show you the bezel action in just a second. 200 meters of water resistance and there he or she is. It is the diver performing the giant stride. Very nice case back I have to say. Deep deep engraved there with the waves underneath and a little bit of bead blasting and it's all very smooth on wrist. Again nice and comfortable. Now we are north of 600 USD today but you do get a solid movement in the back of the giant stride for your cash, that being a Salita SW200. I appreciate this is a prototype and not a production unit, but that is a fairly representative set of numbers. In my experience of these movements, 26 dual hacking and hand winding high beat Swiss made auto. Operational parameters of minus 15 to plus 25 seconds per day, but this one running very nicely. Thank you very much. Do bear in mind though, it will cost you a bit more to service than the equivalent cheaper Japanese auto when that day eventually comes. Right, what else do I need to show you or tell you before we go macro and have a look at the dial and hands in more detail? In a rotating bezel, they're never all that exciting on these dual crown watches. Unscrew the top crown and it rolls back and forth bi-directional so you can use it as a count up or count down timer. Now I can feel the action through my fingers, I can kind of feel it clicking, but that's not to say you can stop it at one minute or 30 second increments because you can't. You can stop it anywhere you like, so you will never get a misaligned bezel with this style of watch because where the bezel sits is entirely up to you. Also, they are putting a hardness coating. They're putting a hardness clear coat on here, taking the Vickers rating up to 1200, which is around six times harder than stainless steel, so it will be considerably more scratch resistant than stainless steel, which is where some of your $615 has gone. All right then, so let's go macro and have a look at the dial and hands. Well, before we do that, let's have a look at the other color options that are available. If you're not into blue, there is a gray one also. If you're not into blue or gray, there is a green and there is what I think is the pick of the bunch, that white and red. I think that takes the design to the next level. A couple of things to note though, they have taken some of the text off the dial here. So, so this is what the watch you will receive will look like. It doesn't have the second hour brand name and it doesn't have the giant stride model name, unlike this prototype that they have sent me. So they have reduced the amount of text on the dial to make it a little less cluttered. Clearly, this is an original design. You ain't buying a dial like this off the shelf. This has become a bit of a second hour signature, a more complex dial design with prominent markers at the 12, the four, and the eight. So again, that sacred geometry thing, dividing the dial into three visually rather than into four. So we've got kind of trapezoidal applied indices all the way around with the prominent ones as discussed and a reduced size one down there at the six o'clock for the date complication. 
Let's zoom in on the date complication because I think they have done it very, very nicely indeed. You can also see some of the complexities on the dial. Those being those kind of wavy sections in the circular center and the concentric circles around the edges. Oh, very, very nice indeed. This is one dial that looks just as good under super macro as it does at arm's length on your wrist. And the hands are certainly not off the shelf items either. They're beveled in the middle, high polished silver near the pinion, but with red tips. So this blue model, all of the four colorways that I showed you earlier on have these red tips, kind of aggressive sword, hour and minute hand. And it also has that red tip to the diamond second hand. Now the second hand pushes all the way out to the edge of that flat center section of the dial. The minute hand a little inboard, kind of splitting some of those concentric circles and the hour hand sitting just inboard in amongst the wavy pattern. And that angled inner rotating bezel has the big triangle up there at 12 as discussed batons at the fives and arabics at the 15 the 30 and the 45 it doesn't have minute markers all the way around having either three or four minute marks depending on whether there is space given to the triangle and the arabics as appropriate and those arabics the five minute markers on the bezel the triangle at 12 the applied indices on the dial and all three hands have a stack of bgw9 pumped into them i spoke to peter the brand owner and he says there is twice as much loom as there was on the gin clear his first diving model literally twice as much loom has been applied around the dial and hands now if we turn the speed up on this one you can see that the bezel is the first thing to go but at the end of the 20 minute test period which i always feel is four to five hours equivalent of human eye the hands and the indices on the dial are still glowing very very brightly indeed and remember this is a prototype you don't normally get great loom on a prototype but this loom is definitely great and as an added bonus both of those crowns are loomed with just as much bgw9 as there is on the hands and the indices i particularly like the effect with the four o'clock crown with the second hour logo on it i think that looks great and that is the watch on wrist i've got a seven inch wrist for your reference and i think it wears pretty well considering the size and the weight overall it looks bigger than it is now these dual crown watches, because they tend to have quite slim internal bezels, that means the dial is larger than it would be if this was a 42 with an external bezel. So that always gives the watch a bit more visual clout, a bit more presence on wrist. Those vintage lugs do point down, helping it conform to the wrist. 12.7 mil thick isn't particularly thick. And you have just that little bit of high polish on the clasp there and a little bit of high polish on the edges of those lugs. That's the overhead shot, white on blue. Blue, especially with those little splashes of color here and there I mean this one is nice and legible you do get some flecto from the double dome as discussed but yeah there's enough anti-reflective undercoating on the crystal to negate that somewhat same same outside in natural light you get a bit of flecto from some angles you get fabulous clarity from other angles i think this watch loves being in natural light the more light the better the colors chosen apart from that white one are quite dark and i think the dial really needs a bit more sun light a bit more natural light to do it justice to really pop on wrist you can see yeah it's a, it's a comfortable watch fairly chunky but nicely wearable nonetheless with that comfortable bracelet and smooth clasp looking down the wrist 46 and a half mil lug to lug i reckon good for me good for the seven inch average wrist brigade but you can also get away with this one even if your wrist is smaller than mine but i did say i had a few moans and niggles with this one a few things that i've picked up over the course of my time with it well there isn't a no date option the mandala they offered a date and they offered a no date whereas this one they're just offering the date as much effort has gone into that dial clearly uh, it would have been nice for them to have offered the cleaner look without the date but there you go like i said it's all about the dial because the case isn't particularly exciting there's not too much going on there and the clasp yeah one extra hole of micro adjust is appreciated but for 615 dollars i would love to have seen a little bit of on the fly adjustment here that is now becoming more commonplace uh, christopher ward zelos halios a number of other brands floating around that 500 us plus price point are all now incorporating on the fly adjustment so maybe for their fourth model that's something that second hour could consider and just because you put a picture of a diver on the back of the watch and have a 200 meter rating doesn't necessarily mean it's a dive watch it's a dive style watch no diver's extension here on this clasp. And I have noticed something with this inner rotating bezel and dial arrangement. There are no minute markers on the dial. 
I cannot think of another dive watch that I have reviewed that doesn't have minute markers on the dial. The only other brand that I can think of that does it with any regularity is Panerai, and they are somewhat outliers in terms of styling. No problem, Jody, there are minute markers on the bezel, I hear you say. Well, yes, there are, but not all the way around as discussed, either three or four per five minute sector, depending on whether they're making way for Arabics and so on. What's the problem? Well, the problem is when you want to set the watch, what are you setting that minute hand against? Well, you have to set that minute hand against that in a rotating bezel, which means it has to be aligned. And what if you're trying to set it on a minute where there isn't a minute marker? Well, you're gonna have to wait to set the watch until the next minute, and it means it's just not quite as, at a glance, super accurate to read those minutes. Again, something that isn't gonna bother 99% of the users 99% of the time, because this is gonna spend most of its life at desks, I would say, rather than doing giant strides off of boats. And then there's the price, $650. $15, I think, is a fair price for this watch. It's not an oh my god, rush out and grab two. And considering the Gin Clear was about 400, they've certainly made a giant stride forward in terms of their pricing. Thanks very much. I'm here all week. Again, I did speak to the brand owner about the price and he said it's a far more expensive watch to produce this one. There's that hardness coating and the sheer dial complexity has added considerably to the cost. I guess 615 with a Salita isn't too bad. There are still plenty of micros out there charging you six, $700 for a Miyota 9000. So yeah, it's okay. It's just not outstanding. And in possibly my most nitpicky niggle ever, the last thing I'm going to moan about today is the triangle in the top crown. If they're all about sacred geometry, I think they missed a trick here. That is an isosceles triangle. It has two equal sides and one long side. As I said, I think it replicates the triangle they've used in the bezel. That means it only has one plane, one axis of symmetry. If they had used an equilateral triangle there and again in the bezel, they would have had three planes of symmetry, three axes on the crown. That's more sacred geometry for you right there. Is that my most nitpicky niggle ever? I suspect it probably is. And there we are, that's the Mandala Cameo that I referenced earlier on. This is their second model, like in a sporty dress watch, mine in glorious salmon pink. And you can see what they're doing with the revisions on the dial of the Giant Stride. They've removed the brand name and the model name. They're kind of cleaning it up like they have with the Mandala. And you can see the similarities, lots of geometry, lots of complexity, and those prominent indices at the 12, the 4, and the 8. So what's next for second hour after this then? How do you translate that lesson? level of dial complexity to something like a chronograph, I reckon that is going to be a major challenge for Peter, but I wish him well, and I wish him well with sales for this second slash third model. So there you have it, well done, you're almost at the end of the video. What are you going to watch next? If you like the second hour look, why not check out my review of their Mandala? If you like the dual crown compressor case diver look, why not check out the Phoebus Eagle Ray for about 50% of the price of this one? Thanks for watching, see you soon.